Hello Internet. Um, I wanted to talk about Euro car parts um, and kind of specifically how, how sneaky they are. Uh, in the UK we've got kind of two main car parts retailers or two main kind of national chains. Um, we've got GSF and Euro car parts. GSF, I'm not a huge fan of GSF because they uh, um, what I don't like with them is the way when you go onto their site you um, it offers you kind of a range of options for your particular car, you put your number plate in um, but it doesn't actually say what you're buying, it just says that you're buying like a, a premium part and then they they decide what that is based on what they've got in stock and all that kind of stuff. Um, I like to kind of know what I'm buying and make the decision on if a brand's a, a premium brand or a cheap brand. Um, so that leaves Euro Car Parts who are kind of in every town and online um, but I prefer them because you can pick which part you've got, but they do some sneaky, sneaky stuff. Um, I guess the first thing is if, if anyone, if you ever see a post on forum saying, oh, quick, Euro Car Parts got this great sale on, they've always got a sale on. Um, the amount of sale always varies, uh, but it's <laughs> the actual price is generally always the same. Um, they also sell for a load of different brands. They've got car parts for less, um, eBay stores, Amazon stores, and all the prices are wildly different. Sometimes one part, <laughs> you end up doing an order, you'll place one part from a, the Euro Car Parts or eBay store, one from Car Parts for Less, one from uh, the main Euro Car Parts site, and they send them all out separately. I don't know how that's kind of cost effective for them, but I guess they kind of rely on people not shopping around. And word gets around, oh, you don't want to use Euro Car Parts, you want to use Car Parts for Less, and suddenly everyone starts flocking there. Um, <laughs> the other kind of really sneaky thing that they do is that you really have to watch some of the brands. Um, specifically for things like oil filters. So this this is a Crossland oil filter and Crossland were um, I think they're an old British brand and quite well regarded at one point but like most British brands they eventually went bust. Um, Euro Car Parts have bought their name and my understanding is that they now effectively just sell any kind of imported part that they can get. They stick a Crossland logo on it and then sell it on. So the quality is kind of all over the shop depending on um, which particular supplier they found for that part. The box is kind of sneaky because uh, it, it lists, if that focuses, come on, focus. Um, it lists kind of which cars this is compatible with. There's a crosslandfilters.com website. Uh, if you go to it, it kind of briefly mentions Euro car parts at the bottom but talks about all the heritage and how it's a British company from 1959 or whatever it is. Um, but there's no, there's no country of origin on here. Um, and nothing to make you kind of think that this is like an own brand part for Euro car parts that they're just selling under a particular brand. It reminds me of um, Sports Direct, the sports retailer that we've got in this country where they, they buy up a lot of kind of well-known older brands, Slazinger, Dunlop Sportswear, all that kind of stuff and then kind of sell all their own rubbish underneath it. So we open it up, um, we've got what looks like a fairly normal oil filter here. Uh, this is for a Mazda MX-5. Um, I bought this filter kind of without thinking um, first when I was getting into kind of servicing my own cars um, and then it arrived and I'd previously done oil changes with official filters, OEM filters. I've got one of those here. Um, and this turned up and kind of the first thing that I noticed was, oh look at, look at the kind of the height difference there, that doesn't look quite right. Um, so I did a bit of research into Crossland and uh, things went a bit airy from there and I never ended up using this filter. I, I bought, I think, another genuine one. Um, I've now kind of moved on to buying these from Euro Car Parts, MAN filters. Uh, MAN are a good German brand. I think they also, uh, they may be owned by Bosch or they produce the Bosch filters because they're, if you buy a Bosch filter it's it's the same kind of part. But if you, if my camera focuses, there we go. Um, you'll see this is a kind of a German made filter good quality and if we compare the size to the the OE filter there it's, it's kind of light for light there I'll just try and then to the Crossland one um, and presumably the less the less distance or the less height you've got there the less filtration material you've also got I'll have a look inside I've got an old um, man one that I've just taken off uh, so we'll we'll have a look at what that looks like inside in a minute and maybe we'll cut this cross on one open and see what the differences are. Um, but I guess the, the other kind of, the kicker here is you, you don't really mind buying a cheap part if it's a cheap price. But 
I think the difference between these, maybe I'll put it on the screen in a bit, but it's it's pence, it's not maybe a pound at most, it's it's not big money, particularly if it's kind of the thing that's on there protecting your engine. Um, okay, one moment, let me uh, bring in that other filter that we've got. So this is the same man filter that we just saw, but chopped open. I've butchered this open with a hacksaw, so it's probably full of bits of metal shavings, but it will it will do to demonstrate. This was on the car, I don't think it was on the car very many miles, but I did um, a couple of track days on it. It's done about 25 laps of the Nürburgring as well, so uh, it's it's had a it's had a good use. Um, I guess the first things that we notice here is that it's kind of a really stout uh, filter, filtration media kind of holder there. Uh, I can't tear this apart. There's no rips in it. Where they've joined the filter, so this is basically a big piece of paper that's wrapped around. Some of the cheaper filters they glue here, but man have kind of attached this to a nice kind of metal crimp there to hold it together. Uh, and even now I can't pull this apart. There's no rips in it. It hasn't kind of given up halfway through. Uh, it's a really nice kind of stout piece. Um, I should also mention there's a good kind of top ring there, nice uh, providing a good seal, so that would have sat up, up on there originally. Um, in fairness to the Crossland part, they've also got a decent seal on, uh, so there shouldn't be any issues there. The other kind of differentiator here, uh, which I don't think I can see in the Crossland, but maybe when we cut it open uh, we might find that that's not the case. There's this spring actuated uh, bypass valve here, so that's where if the, if the filtration media got completely gunged up, um, maybe if you left your oil too long or if there was some kind of issue going on there. Um, this valve will open under pressure and still allow oil through um, so that it won't kind of completely clog up and destroy your engine. You know, that, that, that's kind of important because it could, it could really save you. Um, so yeah, cheap filter, they're only four pounds or so delivered, but some nice little features in there, really stout, hasn't come apart. Um, I could get technical and kind of t cut this paper apart and look at how it's filtered, but um, I don't think there's any point. Nice amount of pleats there, really good piece. Let's have a look at Crossland. So I've got the Crossland kind of unsurreptitiously shoved in my vise here. Um, you can buy special um, oil filter openers that do this without filling it with all loads of bars, but I'm not, I'm not a professional oil filter opener. So we'll make do a hacksaw in there. Some brute force. Also straight away one thing I'm noticing here is that um, I think they've used a slightly cheaper tin, not that this really matters, but um, this is a lot easier to cut through than the, the man filter was. Okay, so we've got this cut open, let's have a look. Back a bit. So, what have we got here? A little diaphragm there. This, this material is actually kind of stuck in there. Let's just have a look. If twist this, oh, yeah. right. So let's just put the man into shot as well. So this this is the equivalent kind of part here. Um, there is is that a bypass valve of sorts? Oh, there we go. There is a bypass valve on the bottom there, but it's. Not quite as stout as this thing there. Um, similar sort of design. We've got probably a lot less, a lot fewer pleats there compared to the man. They're a lot tighter packed. So it's not only is it kind of shorter in terms of the filtration material, but probably fewer pleats within it. So it's probably a smaller surface area. Maybe we should cut these open and kind of hold them side by side. Um, this feels very flimsy. Just trying to see where they've actually joined it. Like, I'm guessing they probably glued this together. There's certainly no metal clamp like there was on the on the man. Um, the danger of gluing it is that when it's exposed to all that hot oil for many hours, if the glue deteriorates and the filter kind of separates, then you effectively lose all filtration because the oil will just flow through that gap unfiltered. Um, 
I guess it's okay. I guess the, the kind of the sickening thing is that it's not like you're buying these to save a huge amount of money. The the difference in price is so minimal that it just feels more like a bit of a con rather than um, a sort of a valid cost saving. It's probably not an area where you want to save too much money either, but then I guess garages, if they fit in these to customers' cars, they'll always just order the cheapest. Um, so that's probably where they hoover up most of their market here. Yeah, it's a pretty flimsy part compared to this. Not hugely impressed. And here we go, I've pulled all the, um, pulled all the filtration media out and you can see here on that join there, Focus. There you go. Um, so it is just joined together. You can see. So if that fails and the heat and oil and separates, you'll find that that kind of pulls apart within the uh, within the filter housing, and then oil will just gush through. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe we will take the let's take the man apart and see see if we compare roughly how long one is compared to the other. The next challenge is going to be <laughs> as we actually get this apart. It's so well made that. Yeah, it's so rigid. I'm not quite sure how to. This is presumably these. I don't know if these caps are glued in there, or yeah, I guess they are. Let's uh, let's stick it in the bench, and I think what we might have to do is take a hacksaw to the uh, to the pleats here. We'll lose a bit of filtration material there, but I just uh, can't see another way to get into this. So we can see the see the spring in action there, which is quite cool. Much, uh, much stouter looking than this thing on the man on the uh, crossland. It's the middle there. That's uh, obviously just retained by the fact that it's all like sandwiched together and potted in there. Yeah, okay. So, I guess we'll have to bear in mind that we've lost that kind of much on either side from the way that we've had to chop this out. Again, that's all nicely potted in there. Stayed together really nicely. You can see how tightly packed those pleats were. I wasn't really sure how to show this, so I've come up with the, uh, the now painting technique of nailing stuff to my bench. Uh, so I've folded the two filtration materials in half, the oily one on the bottom is obviously the man, uh, the cross one's the one at the top, um, and if we look down here, obviously this gap will be doubled, but there's there's not actually as big a difference as I thought between the two filtration medias, I thought the, the cross one would come up much shorter than that, I guess in reality you're probably looking at what, like that much difference between the two, this is very scientific isn't it? Um, the thicknesses are actually pretty similar now that I've chopped the uh, the top and the bottom off the man filter um, and thinking about it with the way that that metal shroud is wrapped around and you've got all that glue kind of stuck in there I guess this is the only actual effective bit of filtration area anyway so the widths are kind of similar so um, although the cross one was a much shorter height I guess it was that way because actually you're, you're getting the sim a similar level of filtration area um, through a, a slightly inferior design in terms of the, the stoutness. Um, I don't, I haven't done any kind of analysis on how good this filtration material is. Uh, maybe it's alright, I don't know. Um, but from the way that the they've cheaped out on the, the rest of the construction there um, compared to the the German, nice German man part, if it's 50p, pound, two pounds, do you really want to take the risk? Um, I still feel like these are quite a sneaky bit of marketing by Euro car parts. Um, and I, I think I'll continue to stick with the MAM filters for now. Thanks for watching, I hope this was vaguely interesting. Uh, see you soon.